welcome to Good Libations, which is our show about mixology. And we're going to do something a bit different today. We're going to highlight Italy and specifically cocktails that are Italian influenced. Because sad to say, just as is the case with wines, Italian wines are sometimes dismissed and never highlighted as they should be. And the same thing with Italian cocktails and other beverages that are associated with Italy. And today specifically, we're going to be talking about the use of Campari in cocktails. And Campari is an Italian aperitif, bitter orange liqueur, you might say. And unfortunately today, it's been a bit neglected, although there's starting to be a resurgence in the use of Campari in the form of the cocktail, the Negroni, which has been around for a very, very long time. Some authorities claim that the Negroni has been around since the early 1900s. Some say it's been around since the 1930s. But at any rate, that's quite a length of time. And Campari is really unique. It's a one-of-a-kind liqueur. It, it's made from a base, actually an infusion, I should say, of herbs and fruit. And to me, it has a top note of bitter orange, which is the most outstanding flavor that you get out of Campari. But it also has a slight hint of cherry and of cinnamon, if you really notice carefully, as it sits on your palate. That's the aftertaste that you will get. And again, it's an acquired taste. In Europe, and especially in Britain, Campari is drank a great deal with soda. Very, very simple, just Campari and soda over ice. But the Negroni evolved because of an Italian count named Camillo Negroni, who started drinking his Campari with gin. And with the addition of Italian vermouth, which is sweet vermouth, you've basically got the Negroni. And there's kind of two schools of thought about how to make it. And I prefer to make it the traditional way, which is simply by putting it in an old-fashioned glass, such as this one, and adding ice and adding the ingredients and stirring it. Now, some establishments who make Negronis will use it in a shaker, and they'll divest it through the shaker into a cocktail glass, and that's fine too. And you always want to put a garnish on a Negroni. Some like to put a lemon twist on it. Some like to put an orange twist on it. I actually like to put a small wheel of orange with the peel on it. Because I think beauty-wise that sets it off. And also you have that infusion again of the fruit and of the oils in the peel into the Negroni. So we're going to proceed in, to make the cocktail. And first of all, I'm going to put ice in the glass. And again, I'm using an old-fashioned glass. And I'm trying to make the ice simple instead of complicated like I usually do. So I've kind of um, pre-bagged it, which I usually don't like doing, but that's what we're going to do for the sake of demonstrating the Negroni. And proportion-wise, it should be equal proportions of the gin, the Campari, and the um, Italian sweet vermouth. But some like to add a bit more gin, some like to add a bit more Campari, but I'm going to make it basically equal in each of the ingredients. And to be kind, to everybody as I demonstrate this, I'm actually going to use the shaker top, which I don't usually do, because I like to free pour, as you know. But anyway, we're going to start with the gin. And I think we may have to add a little bit more. And then we're going to add the Campari. And Campari cannot be substituted with anything else. It's a one-of-a-kind product. Very much like chartreuse green and yellow liqueur, which is made from like 49 different herbs, or Benedictine, you cannot substitute Campari with anything. It's unique. It's one of a kind. So we're going to add an equal amount of Campari. And then we're going to add, hopefully, an equal amount of Italian vermouth. 
And I keep emphasizing that because Italian vermouth is sweet. We don't want to use dry vermouth like we would do if we were making a martini. We want to use sweet vermouth as if we were making a traditional Manhattan. So I'm going to go ahead and add the vermouth now in about an equal proportion. And I'm going to go ahead and stir. And again, for those who want the Negroni not over ice, you can do it in the shaker and then dispense it into a martini glass or some other equivalent of such glassware. But this is the traditional way in which it is made. So I'm going to go ahead and add the orange to it. And again, most establishments, if they make Negronis at all, will just add the peel. But I like to add either a tiny wedge or a half wheel of orange and squeeze it to get a little bit of juice and get the infusion from the peel and then drop it in the drink. And this is a traditional Negroni. And the bartender who originated the Negroni um, was a gentleman from a nice watering hole in Florence, Italy. And he's the one who um, started making it according to the tradition of Count Camillo Negroni. So again, this is a traditional Italian cocktail. And it's about time that people start focusing on things like this too because they're neglecting a whole adventure. And there are other variations of Negronis that you can make. You can make one where you add bourbon instead of gin. And you can make one, believe it or not, or you use Prosecco instead of using gin, which kind of makes a very light Negroni that doesn't give you a big wallop of alcohol, we'll say. But this is what people think of usually when they think of the Negroni. So this is something that you can try at home. And always remember, um, good cocktails are not out of the reach of anyone. You don't have to go to bartending school. You don't have to buy fancy barware. You don't have to buy fancy ingredients. In fact, as I always emphasize, you don't have to use top shelf liquor when you're making drinks. Decent liquor, yes, not rot gut, but not necessarily top shelf. But do use fresh ingredients when possible and try to adhere to the original recipe when possible. And thankfully, the, the Negroni is making a resurgence so you should be able to get it in decent establishments, mixology and cocktail establishments. And a little bit of a word, too, about mixology. Some establishments are making a point of saying that we don't have mixologists here because the term mixologist, sad to say, instead of meaning necessarily fresh ingredients, has taken on a hint of snobbery. So it's being abandoned by some of the serious establishments. So that's something to keep in mind. I might start calling myself a bartender again. But whatever you want to say, always adhere to the proper way of making a drink. And you can add your own flourishes and touches, but not so esoteric and weird that you ruin the drink and you're using things that don't blend together and marry together well. But anyway, we have a nice traditional Negroni. And hopefully it will live up to the hype. I'm going to Take a sip of it here. Perfectly balanced, very, very nice. You can taste the Campari, but it doesn't overwhelm the other ingredients. And again, as I always say at the conclusion of my program, let's keep our community safe and well spoken of by being very careful about how much we imbibe. And thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist bartender. Thank you again, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Goodbye.